I've always liked the idea of a new year. It's a closing of a chapter and the start of a new one. A hope that you can leave the bad things behind and start fresh. Set new goals, start new habits, anything feels achievable. And how did I start my new year? I started 2023 feeling completely burnt out. I don't even want to talk about how I got here, it just happened. There were things that I could have done better to prevent it, but also a few curveballs that life just decided to throw my way. The point is, I didn't feel like doing anything, and so I did just that. I did nothing. Trying to recover from a burnout is not easy. It was tough not knowing how long this feeling would last. I dreaded the idea that if I tried to draw, the blank empty page would be staring back at me, and that I would have no ideas, nothing to give to that empty page. But instead of worrying about those things, I allowed myself to just be. I read, I journaled, and organized my room. I took walks. I let my mind be completely blank and take in whatever is around me. And to my own surprise, soon enough, I found myself opening my iPad, and I felt like drawing. Just cleaning my room because it's so messy right now. It's kind of a reflection of my mind because I have so many things I'm trying to get done at the same time. I'm running behind schedule. Of course that couldn't be helped because I really really needed the break. I just finished January Patron illustration which I'm going to make into a risograph print. The final colors are going to be much more vibrant than what you're seeing now. I will show you once the samples come in. I'm also working on this year's birthday card which I send to patrons on their birth month. I like to have a new design every year so it's an extra thing that people can look forward to in the mail. There's also a traditional piece that I'm working on now for a group show and it's going to be at Outre Gallery in Melbourne, Australia. That needs to arrive to them by February so I need to get that done right away. But yeah, I'm actually feeling pretty good after taking the time off. I'm trying to keep this positive energy and just remind myself to take things one step at a time. This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. For February, both boxes are Valentine's themed. With Tokyo Treat, you will get the latest exclusive pop snacks, most of which are only available in Japan for a limited time. Sakurako partners with local snack makers so you can experience authentic Japanese snacks from the comfort of your own home. The Sakurako subscription box always comes with one special Japanese tableware and this time we have a very cute soup bowl with a chidori pattern. We're going to try the Tokyo Treat box. The theme this time is my snacking valentine. Valentine's in Japan is big on strawberries. So we're going to try mini strawberry thunder. Black Thunder is a famous chocolate brand here in Japan and this one is a strawberry limited edition. It's not pure chocolate, it has like biscuit bits mixed into it, which I actually like better. This one is strawberry ginza rusk. Mmm, this is really light and airy and I really really like it. I, I can imagine finishing this in like two minutes. I'm gonna have another one. Mmm, 
This one is Kit Kat, Daifuku flavor. Daifuku means big luck in Japan. So if you're in need of some luck, whether in romance or in your exam, you can have some of these. Mm. I, I actually really like this one. Kit Kat in Japan always have lots of different flavors. This is one of the more traditional ones and I think it will be interesting to try. Okay, then lastly, we're going to try this Kuu Jelly. I've actually never had one of these squeeze pouches. This one is peach flavor. Mm. It's really refreshing. It's like something I would want to drink in summer because it has jelly bits as well. It is really good. I'm not gonna try it right now, but this month also comes with this spicy ramen. And I like that in these booklets, they always show the instructions of how to make it. And the booklet also shows for every snack any common origins, as well as like interesting facts about the snacks. Now we're going to try the Sakurako box. The theme is Valentine's list featuring snacks from Osaka. So sakura ko boxes always come with tea pairings. The two that I got are sakura sencha and shinshi fukucha. And I'm going to try sakura sencha. Mm, it has a mild floral taste. First we're going to try kinako dumplings. And these are so cute. It's the cutest thing ever. Mmm. It's kinako flavor, which is roasted soybean, and it's just so cute. I really love how these look. Okay, next we're gonna try Osaka Chiyoko. So this snack okoshi has a really long history. It started as early as the 8th century. This one has white chocolate and raisins coating. Very sophisticated taste. Even adults would enjoy this. Then we have chocolate strawberries. Mm, I don't know if it's gross to show this, but the inside is freeze-dried strawberries. And the last thing I'm gonna try is this Maneki Neko Senbei. This one is not from Osaka, it's from Saitama, but I had to try this because it looks so cute. It says here that red Maneki Neko bring good fortune in love and marriage. Oh my god, I broke him in half. <laughs> so cruel. Mmm tasty as well as cute. These Sakurako and Tokyo treat boxes will make perfect Valentine gifts for your loved ones or even for yourself. If you're interested in getting one, you can get $5 off your first box with my code LOVESU. It's been a pretty busy month despite the slow start. I managed to finish everything on time which was amazing and I totally forgot to show this earlier but here is this year's birthday card design. I actually drew this in a cafe and going to cafes to work is something I've been enjoying again recently. Something I've come to realize more and more with art and life is that sometimes you just have to let go of control and just trust the process. Art blocks and burnouts can feel so difficult because you don't know how long the feeling will last and instead of trying to force myself to make something happen, this time I just decided to let it be. And then the feeling passed on its own. It's like the less I resist, the more things seem to get easier. 
and I really want to approach this new year with this feeling of ease. Just more trusting the process, more trusting in my own pace. So with that, I want to say thank you for joining me here again this year. I wish you all a wonderful 2023 and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye!